guys uh, okay good morning good afternoon or good evening depending on where you are in the world and we're gonna we're gonna have some fun here but tell us where you are first of all there's Mike in Phoenix I bet it's cold there right Phoenix is an amazing place hot in the summer cold in the winter uh, I love Camelback it's a cool place go hiking up there and uh, who else is out there? Give us a shout. Do like us, because that does seem to let people know that we're live here and doing well. This is live, by the way. Hey, Tim, you are in Choctaw, Oklahoma. Or Ch is it Choctaw? Choctaw, Oklahoma, cool. Yeah, it is cool. Hey, Sue in Sun Valley. And River, let's have River join us here for a minute. Okay, there she is. She is a snuggle bug. Look who's out there, River. You get to see all those people. Where are they? River likes to go to the TV, and whenever she sees a horse or a dog, she barks at it, and then she runs around behind the TV to see where it is. It's the cutest thing you've ever seen. She's like trying to protect us from these bad horses and dogs that have come into the house. Okay, River, you're going to get down now. Come into the house, and then she's, you know, her guardian instinct. <laughs> she's just trying to protect, a, protect the family from these bad animals. Let's see who else showed up here. Pahu and Nama, Namaste from India and Grace in San Francisco. Yes. We're going to be there next week. And uh, Tom in Northridge. And Maury in Seattle, Washington. Awesome. We're kind of spanning things. Do we have anybody out there from Argentina? Bravo to you guys in the World Cup. We're, we're rooting for you. Come on. Argentina. It's amazing. So I have a lot of friends from Argentina. And uh, I just... Ooh love seeing those games it's just amazing okay well you guys this can be really interactive I want to hear your questions and your feedback as I go through this in a minute uh, but first of all I want to remind anybody out there hey Rachel anybody who has not yet subscribed please do so and enable the bell and Rachel is up there in Seattle where it can be often cold and rainy, and I bet it is. Actually, I have a, a client in Seattle. He sent me some pictures the other day, very, very snowy. Uh, Maury, hey, both of you guys are from Seattle. You guys should get to know each other. Okay, well, let's, without further ado, let's thank our sponsor. Are we ready on that screen, Jared? We are. Okay, so here we are. Let's print something amazing. Okay, you can get 15% off on press printed calendars. Now is the time to make calendars and get them out to your friends, family. You can sell them, you can give them to your clients. What's great about a client, I mean, a calendar is it, it hangs around for 12 months, right? So you've got 12 months of promotion if you give them out to your clients. Just remember that, it's actually a pretty cool feature there. You get 15% off. 10% off on large prints. Large prints they define as I think 16 by 16 and larger. You should be making big prints and get them out on your wall. Get them framed. They do framing as well. So do that and as always on your first order And Gear from Norway. Uh, also, uh, yeah. Mark, can you hear me? Yeah. I think something has uh, gotten unplugged. It seems your microphone isn't set to the same. Uh oh. Went out for a moment. I wasn't sure if it was on my end or not. 
And now it sounds like you're coming through like your computer. Well, let's get that fixed right now. Let's check our good old system preferences here in the Mac. Okay, that's set up right. Uh, does it still sound not correct? Yeah, yeah. It's not. Okay, well, let's go over the audio and see what's you going wanna on. You want to try uh, snapping uh, or like... Uh, I did uh, move... Is that better? There we go. Okay, there was a little bit of a disconnect there. Okay, so that sounds like we're coming off the Yeti. Yep, you're sounding just perfect now. Okay, good. All right. And <clears throat> there we go. So, okay, guys. So there's your go-to. Go to Bay Photo and get some prints made. And, yes, please comment as we go through this. Like and when you're done here let's share this thing so let's talk about some creative tips these are brand new I've never talked about them before you know I had an interview newspaper interview the other day about this book this is our new edition and then there's River behind me and if you guys don't have a copy of it, you should grab it you should get it on Amazon and it's in available in three different flavors on Amazon you can get it as the printed book which I really recommend I'm a big fan of getting printed books that you can do things like I do here, leave notes and write in the margins. But you can also get it as an ebook, right? And an audiobook. A lot of people listen to the book, which I'm happy to hear, you know, which is great. So you can get all three flavors, and that's even better. But you guys should own this book and you should be using it because it really works. The deal is, I've had enough feedback to know that this book does work, do what I promise, which is it will increase your creativity. It'll unleash your creativity while removing that fear. I mean, how can you resist this? Come on. <laughs> what am I supposed to do here? Tell this dog to go away. Okay, so let's talk about my go-to tools for creativity. Um, number one, you have to have space to create in. And th that's in a couple of different senses. You, and this is in the book, but you should designate your creative space. That's your studio. And I don't care if that studio is a desk that's this big. That's your studio. That's your sacred place. That's where you create. You own that. Don't have a free-floating creative space. Have a designated space that is yours that you can put all your stuff and you can create with, okay? I have this space completely organized for creativity. Like over here, you can see I have a bookshelf and I have my creative books in here. Like for instance, in terms of writing, I have, these are really good references, the Chicago Manual of Style. How often do I use this? Not very often, but if I need to know what is the right way to phrase something, I pull this out. This is a reference book I'm writing. I've got all sorts of other books in here. I've got my Lightroom. I've got my, uh, what else is in there? All my Ansel Adams books are in here. You know, I've got, this is easy to reach too. So that's the thing, you want to organize your space that works and is comfortable for your creativity and encourages creativity. But don't have it just be in some random place. That's your space. Put it together. I mean it. It's really, really important. Okay? The other thing about space, it's not just in the physical sense that you need to have space. You need to be looking out at the world and space comes from viewing things. You know, when you're in a confined place, this is why it's so important when you're working with computers or you're on your phone that you put them down. I mean, my physical therapist tells me at least once every hour, get up, stretch, move around, but really even more important than that physical stuff is looking out into the environment Get out there and see stuff. That's why walks are so important. But as photographers, what we're doing is we're seeing stuff in a new way that maybe is going on all around us, 
but nobody else has really stopped to capture that moment but that comes from seeing photography is the art of seeing actually all visual art is whether it's filmmaking or photography or painting or drawing you have to see what's out there and that's not just an automatic thing you have to practice it practice your seeing that's why I say go out and do this right or do that but you know use your framing tools because here's the trick in terms of you see stuff out here don't have a camera pressed to your face you know that's in my book also L just look without a camera go around and check the scene S what's interesting a story from uh, my son actually working in a startup and Annie Leibovitz came to photograph Annie Leibovitz right and he said it was really interesting. She just walked around for about a half an hour looking at the space. No camera in her hand, no lighting. Just looking around to spot what are the good places to photograph here? What's going to be photogenic? So take that from her. That's a good piece of advice. Get your space out there. Get your physical space, your studio space, and then your mental space you know how mentally you can have your space be about this big it doesn't feel good does it it really feels bad or you can go out and you're in a beautiful place like you know you're in Yosemite or you're at Carmel Beach or you're at the Grand Canyon or someplace where there's a lot of space and you go out there and you kind of feel like bigger and bigger and better and bigger you can do that anywhere you can do that in a city you know are you looking at things that are like one inch in front of your face or are you out there really looking I did a film in Times Square in New York you know and it was like interesting because there's a lot of space there but there's a lot of people moving around in it and I had to kind of get over my stage fright while people were around it didn't matter actually they weren't really paying that much attention to me but that's part of owning your space okay the other thing there is this quality that you have to adopt in your creativity river is just demanding my attention and that is it goes like this the way that I do not like to hear it phrased but you've heard this and that is fake it until you make it I don't like that because the fake part is just wrong the truth is you have to pretend you do have to pretend when you get going I started I'm gonna give you an example of of pretending I pitched my original show which became advancing your photography started off as I called it the photo show I just had this sort of almost generic name and <clears throat> I went to SanDisk you know our friends who make the memory cards. Okay, where we're right now. These are my go-to cards. There we are. There's the sand disc. Uh, it's an old one. I pitched the idea to them of doing these interviews with photographers. I had actually made three of them. First one I made was actually we filmed Annie Leibovitz going through her exhibit in San Francisco. It wasn't really an interview, but I, I had my team and we were wandering around with her filming it the second one was Ansel Adams son in Yosemite right and I'll tell you why I chose this as my second one and then the third one was Chase Jarvis in his studio in Seattle how did I end up with Annie Leibovitz and Ansel Adams as my two first two videos I wrote a list I took a list out and I said okay I'm gonna start this show who are who are the top photographers in the world that I should feature because if I get the top photographers in the world I'm gonna get the rest of them right so I wrote Ansel Adams Annie Leibovitz okay River on my little list there you see that and then later I thought I need a really contemporary photographer and Chase was kind of at that time I mean he still is he was very hip and upcoming so I put his name down there Chase Jarvis 
Those are my top three, and those were the top three videos that I had. I went to SanDisk in 2009, 2008. We were in the height of the recession. I don't know if you guys were <laughs> around then. The real estate market had collapsed. Stock market had collapsed. It was a mess. I go to, I go to SanDisk. I've never shot a video in my life. I've never edited a video. I didn't even do little home movies and stuff, you guys. I was a still photographer. But I thought, this is what I want to do. And I fortunately had a really good producer that could do this stuff. But I went to them, I pitched the idea of, of this show. Okay, this is a real story. I pitched the idea. They, you know, they didn't really give me any big feedback. They just kind of, mm-hmm, okay, mm-hmm, all right. I didn't hear from him for a week or two. You know, you get nervous when you put your, your heart into something and then you don't hear anything. You know what that feels like, right? It, you know, it's like, what do I do now? I don't want to pester them. Maybe I send them a reminder me email. That's about it, right? And then you kind of just play the waiting game. So then I get a call. Mark, we'd like to have a meeting with the uh, lunch meeting. Uh, how would you like to meet at the Four Seasons Hotel? They have a restaurant there, which happened to be right next door to where I was living. Okay, they didn't say, Mark, we we're hiring you. It was really funny. You know what this meeting was? This river, no, she's chewing paper here. You're interrupting my story. This meeting was a production meeting. They never said, you're hired, this is, you know, bravo, well done, sign the contract. It was a production meeting. As a matter of fact, the contract didn't actually get formally signed for about six months because we had to go back and forth on their legal stuff and whatnot. But meanwhile, we just marched ahead. But we had a production meeting, what we were going to do, and it was like, I thought, you know, they're probably not inviting me to go to the Four Seasons restaurant to tell me they're not hiring me. And that was it. That's a true story. And I literally had to pretend. I'm not going to say fake it. But what did I do then? I got myself trained. I trained myself in video. I trained myself as an editor. Every time I was hanging around with my team, I was, what are we doing here? How are we setting it up? What camera are you using? What lens are you using? What? How's the audio set up? Where are the lights? I was doing what Clint Eastwood did when he was a young actor on the set of Rawhide, if you guys remember that. Rawhide, he was Rowdy Yates in Rawhide. And what did he do when he wasn't on camera? He hung out with the, with the uh, director of photography or the director and he asked questions and he observed what they were doing. That's how he became one of the greatest directors in the world, just by doing that. And that's a really powerful lesson, you guys. Do not be afraid to ever ask questions of somebody who knows how to do it. They actually enjoy telling you. So that's tip number three. So what do we got? Get your space together. Pretend. Get your idea and go out and pitch it. Don't be afraid, okay? You do need proof of concept. Like I did have these three videos that were professionally produced. Okay, I did have that. This wasn't just made up. And they were like, oh, not bad, Mark. Start with Ansel Adams, you got Annie Leibovitz, and you got Chase Jarvis. You know, okay. So was that luck? I had to reach out to all those. Those, those just didn't fall out of the sky. I mean, I didn't have anything to go on. I had no YouTube channel. I had never done this before. I warmed up my communication with Ansel Adams' family, and that opened some doors naturally once I got that going. And then Chase, to his credit, just kind of took me on faith. I, again, I wasn't anybody. I had no notoriety of any kind, really. but. He invited me up to his studio in Seattle. We shot that film, and then he introduced me to a whole lot of other people. So that was really helpful. Thank you, Chase. 
I helped him too. I introduced him to SanDisk and that was a big deal for him. So I'm just telling you this story, you guys. This is a real deal. I've got more of these kinds of stories. But you got to believe in yourself as modern times said, believe in yourself, God will help us when we try. That is true. You do get that extra force of nature, of God, whatever you want to call it, that will propel you, but you do have to believe in yourself. And you know what? I'll tell you one other thing. Be willing to fail. Be willing to fail. It's just going to happen. You're going to fall on your face. People are going to reject you. You're going to, like, I didn't tell you that before I did that Sandus pitch that I had pitched to 25 other places. You know, so I even had a big, big deal with a very prominent company that you guys use all the time. I'm not going to tell you who it is. Adobe. <laughs> okay. And then we had a really big deal set up with them. And then the recession hit and they just withdrew it. That, that was heartbreaking. So you got to get over that. I mean, it was like a dream deal. But then the Sandisk deal turned out to be the new dream deal. They hired me for two years to go out and interview photographers. I owned all the content, which I still do. That became the basis of my YouTube channel. Then they sent me around to do workshops in all the major camera stores in the country. B&H, Adorama, Sammy's Camera in LA, uh, uh, Roberts in the Midwest. I mean, it was really cool. What a cool job. And then they call me up sometimes. Mark, can you come over and just do a workshop for us? Oh, yeah, sure. Why not? And uh, awesome. That was all done because I really believed in what I was doing, which is what I'm doing now, which is helping people be more creative. And I love that. It's one of my greatest joys. Okay. So, okay, well, if you guys have any questions about creativity, you can jump in here. I do want to let you guys know, and Jared, maybe we can just put this up. We are, we have a Green Monday sale. Now, ah, Green yes. Monday, I didn't even know there was such a thing as Green Monday until I got an announcement from B&H that they were selling stuff as Green Monday. Turns out there is another sale opportunity for Green Monday. Okay, there we are. So advancing your photography bundle, which is normally $636, that's my mm -hmm. full advancing your photography course. It follows the book exactly, but it's a video version. And guess what? You're going to get the code in a second. Yep, I'm putting it in. It's going to be green. Green. And you'll get to save a ton of money. What is the dis discounted price on this thing? Um, one hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Okay, guys, you got to get it. If you don't own it, there you go. And I'll show you. So you just go to this screen. You put your information in, and then you put green. Hit apply, and look at that. One seventy-seven. One hundred and fifty-nine. And here's yeah, the deal. One, yeah, one seventy-seven. Yeah. So here's the deal, you guys. Buy it for yourself, or buy it like other people have done for a friend who needs to learn photography, and we'll even send you the picture of that box uh, will send you a JPEG that you can print and write your Christmas card, your Hanukkah card, whatever you're giving to these friends. So you have something physical. You just get a print made and there you go. You're in business. You got a perfect gift. This is a great course, you guys. This is really the best course out there on photography. I'm not just saying that. I've heard that from many other people. Okay, so take advantage of it if you don't own it or if you do own it, buy it for a friend. Help me help you because there's a lot of benefit for you, but there's benefit for us. It helps us open the door to new content. We're going to be creating a ton of content in 2023. There's going to be a course on this book coming your way. Just stay tuned. How about a course on how to be more creative and how to live a more creative life? You think anybody's interested in that? Yeah. Okay. And uh, on top of that, Modern Times asked about doing an international photo contest. We are. We actually almost the did idea. That. 
And we almost launched that. We just have too many other things on our plate to just put that in there. But we are going to be doing that in the new year. Absolutely. It's coming your way. Yeah, we, got we got so much new- stuff, so much stuff happening. It's just it's hard to talk about it all. Thank you, Mike. Yes, that is a great deal. And the real great deal about it is you're going to advance your photography to whole new levels. Come on. It, it's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. And it's a video, so you can follow along with it if you own a copy of... What do you got in your mouth, River? Oh, thank you. She's got a pair of glasses. Now, for, <laughs> fortunately, these are already broken, so she can chew them to her heart's delight. But... That's not really what you want to see your dog chewing on, right? Okay, so this is the original cover of Advancing Your Photography, but that's, if you have the book, which you should own, and we are giving it, we're still giving it away free, right? We just cover the shipping, we'll get it out to you. But the, the video course covers this book exactly, and it's got some unreleased footage that we're just putting together or finishing of me out shooting. You follow me around shooting in Point Lobos. So come on, do it. Okay, that's enough of that advertisement. Let's get down to business with your guys' photographs, okay? What do we got here? That's gorgeous. Who's, who's yeah, um, who this, is this is from Nancy. Uh, and let me check what the caption was that came. No caption with this one. Uh, but yes, gorgeous photo. You know, it just takes your your talk about space. This is a good example of, of a photograph that really gets your space because you've got this foreground, rocky ground thing, and then you've got your eye going all the way, you know, to those hills, and then that really interesting color sky, kind of uh, teal blue almost right but there is a punctuation point with that building and that is a building right or is that a freight car something it looks like maybe a freight car but whatever that is that becomes a punctuation point yeah your eye goes to it lighting is gorgeous i'm really intrigued by that teal blue sky how that came about yeah because there's light on the hills so the sun is still up but somehow that sky is very dark. I'd be curious to hear if you did some processing on that or this is how it really looked. Okay, but good job. Well done. All right. This photo is from Guadalupe. I saw that. Uh, Yeah, and so this one is titled, I think it's like getting ready to go to work. Yeah, I saw this and I thought that's really, you know, an interesting illustrative photograph. And I I call this, this is what we, you know, Dan Milner calls a transition photograph or a connecting photograph. Let's say you're following these workers along and they put their gloves down. I have done these kinds of photographs often. And and uh like I'm out backpacking and I'm showing the equipment so it's a story it's a piece of a story that goes along with the rest of the narrative about whatever you're photographing so it's important to have these and i'm going to assume that there is more to that story so that's a good one okay all right our next one is from this is from aiden i saw your bud photographs (laughs) I'm naturally drawn. This is the best one of the of the lot. Yes. You've got leading lines leading right up there. And I'm wondering if you were directing that. I believe so, just, just based on the other photographs I saw. Um, I mean, I'm a sucker for a VW. We, this was symbolic of the 60s of like cheap, transportation that could get you from one place to another and i still remember the sound of that engine you know kind of wheezy sound <clears throat> for those of you who don't know that's a rear engine automobile bw's always had rear engines and they had no radiator because they were air cooled 
They're very inexpensive, and a lot of us hippies own them. So they still kind of symbolize that free spirit, you know, of getting out and <clears throat> roaming the countryside. I had a v little VW that I borrowed when I was going to art school, driving across the Golden Gate Bridge. Anyway, it, it's bringing back all those memories, and <laughs> you've got your leading lines, you've got the horns on the back, which is kind of a mixed message for me you know but i love the i love the whole look of it so that's pretty cool i'd be um curious on your thoughts on one person's comment um they thought that maybe the uh color grading had gone too far what what's your opinion on that on the on the yellow on, the on this photo <clears throat> yeah i could see that you could probably pull that down it is a little bit yeah it is popping out a little bit more than one would think or see yeah pull that down a little bit that's a good point actually i, I was just curious on uh yeah I, on I, I see that for sure yeah. so you know and, and it is one of those of course artistic decisions where once again <clears throat> if you disagree and you like it that way just then, it's your it's your photograph yeah, yeah then that's fine so you know it, yeah. it's not law that you can't have it be that yellow but, you know recommendation i would even suggest making it a black and white simply because it kind of goes with the vibe of the of that time and you know one thing chris burkhart mentioned is using or yeah photographing your subjects that are kind of timeless like is that 1965 is that 1995 is it 2005 you know you can't necessarily place it so that's another reason on the color to maybe even think about make a black and white out of it. Give it a shot. See what it looks like. Okay. Speaking of black and white, we've got a photo from our good friend Gear. Uh, an interesting wall I found walking in my town in Norway, uh, taken with his Olympus OMD and a 60 millimeter lens, digital this time. Okay, so gear, you know, you've got, this is one of these examples of, you've got a set that's interesting, you've got window frames, but wouldn't it be more interesting if there was a face or somebody leaning out of that window, let's say? And that's just a matter of either waiting, I, what's that? I think the focus is mostly on the door. <laughs> yeah, okay, so that's an interesting door but i i you know you've got three frames here four actually you've got one two five frames really you've got a upper window lower window and that door but you've got a set you're ready for something to happen put a put a face in there put a person in there a dog leaning out the window um you are the director you've got your set Put something in it. Could be you. You could put a self timer there, or a, or a remote uh, control thing. You know, clicker, and go open the window. And I mean, maybe you can't get in that house. I don't know, but you could. I, I'm just saying, you've got a set. You need to fill it with with that extra added thing, which is life. So there you go. But you know it's 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 good on the framing and you're you're half you're part of the way there just just take it the rest of the way home. Okay. All right. Uh, our next photo, going with our you know we are in the holidays time. Yeah. Yes. So this one's from our good friend uh, Chris Carpenter. Carpenter. Chris, good good one, good story. This definitely has to be in color, obviously. Uh, you know, it's like you don't want a black and white Santa. And also the colors on that grading are r really interesting how it's, there's that teal blue again. What is this? It's funny how we get themes going along here. So it's a complete story. Santa walking down into the subway. What happened to him? Boy, he sure got beaten up. He doesn't even look very, you know, just the body language, kind of the, the way the, the hat is kind of schlumped over and you know he's walking down there but that's a really good really good photograph you've got all sorts of interesting stuff that catches your eye and of course your eye goes right to Santa 
but it's framed really well with the wavy, you know, the wavy grating and you can see the whole subway sign, so that's pretty cool. Okay. All right. Our next photo is this is from our friend Grace in San Francisco. Lamps of Little Saigon. Is that in San Francisco? I mean the Yep, in Little Saigon. Little Saigon. I didn't even know there was a Little One Saigon. One of the neighborhoods there. I guess I just have never been there. Yeah, you can see that the uh, Victorian in the background on the right. That's uh, definitely a typical San Francisco. You know, okay, so here's, uh, here's the thing. I see, you know, those are lamps. That's interesting. So it's either a transition type photograph part of your story um, or we're waiting for something to to happen you can use it as a transition photograph you know on the right going over to the right I'm almost more interested yeah that that could be interesting maybe shot with an angle and maybe somebody riding a bicycle down the street with this is where your visualization my visualization comes in i go whoa that's kind of a cool billboard on the side of that building what if a bicycle were riding along kind of mimicking it now you've got a kind of a, a really interesting photograph anyway good on it being a transition photograph it needs something else it needs photographs before or after it needs another point of interest and River, what makes you think you're allowed to come up here just like this? For those of you, who was it that asked us to see more of River? Because she saw River on the Scott Kelby show on the grid. River showed up. <laughs> so River is becoming more and more part of the, the action here. She's got a job to do, and that's she's our mascot. Anyway, let's go back to Okay, River, are you going to submit some photographs? Thank you for chewing papers up while we're on the show, and I'll enjoy cleaning those up later. Okay, the joys of puppyhood. Okay, who's next? All right, our next photo. This is from... Uh, I saw this Buck one, Rob. too. Yeah. Yep, uh, and the caption with this one was... Let me find it. Uh, yeah, sunset shot on a Sony A6300 uh, F22 sun flares and reflections. Yeah, that's how you get a sun flare is you stop it down to um, 22. Mike, I'll explain what a transition photo is in a minute. So, the, you know, hey, I'm, I'm a big fan, as you guys probably know, of, of reflections. That water is perfectly still. And I would be... Did, did he mention the shutter speed on this one? No. Okay. I'm thinking it's a long shutter speed um, because the water is super still. You know, it's a beautiful landscape. It actually has a kind of an S-curve to it. Yeah. You can... S well, I'm looking more at the river. Because the river... Oh, yeah. yeah it's, it's really kind of leading lines, but you can see that it's going around the corner there. So that's really... Tick technically an s-curve and what you want to do with an s-curve is lead your eye <clears throat> to the main subject which you're doing with the sun so bravo that works mike a transition photo is one that's part of a series and uh <clears throat> dan milner explained that so you've got a uh, story that you're doing let's say and i use the example of the gloves for instance Let's say we're watching, you know, we're photographing that cowboy or that worker. Yeah. And this is a transition photo that maybe goes from one of picture of the guy working to his gloves to something else. It, it links, it's a linking photograph. By itself, it's not a standalone, but it's part of a series. Does that make sense? Okay. Who else have we got here? All right. We've got Sue. Uh, our good friend Sue in Idaho and this is a juvenile let's see juvenile red tail hawk I have a red tail that lives right around my house and and I see him 
frequently. They're absolutely beautiful. Uh, you can see, yeah, he's a juvenile. He's got that all that white plumage because when they get older, they're they're redder. I Sue, I would just suggest pulling back a little bit more. That's just me. I just like to see a little more space around. I feel like it's a little crowded. I would pull back, not a whole lot, but either move back or. If you're using a zoom lens, just zoom out a little bit. Give it a little more space. Um, the thing that you've got that's good, for sure, I mean, there's a lot of good things about it. We're very sharp on the eyes, and the eyes are looking. You're, you've left space for the look of the animal into the environment. That's actually really important because it gives it space. But pull back a little bit more. That's just, I'm just giving you my instant critique on it. Just give it a little more space. That's just me. Okay. Good work, though. All right. We got just a few more pictures left. Okay. This mm -hmm. one is from our friend Susie. Uh, and this is Autumn in my beautiful Athens country backyard. Athens, Georgia, right? Not Athens, Greece. Uh, Athens, Ohio, actually. Ohio, okay. Yep, Athens, Ohio, which I lived not that far from there for some time. So really, okay. It does get beautiful out there. In the yeah, world. that's. I mean, look, that's a really beautiful fall uh, landscape. Um, you know, the only thing I would do, honestly, just in terms of processing is I would probably get rid of the that vegetation that's popping out of the rock but that right there this is post processing you may not agree with me but you could easily get rid of that and let the branches just kind of be on their own without that that's kind of interfering with to me just that much you know um, it's just a taste thing. It's just a judgment thing. You may or may not agree with me on that. That's my only thought because I think, um, you know, we have the ability to do that with digital photography. With film, not so much. But this is one of the cool things about digital photography. Um, in Photoshop, you know, that's a fairly easy fix or Lightroom. <clears throat> and, um, you know, that would be my suggestion. But it's a it's a really gorgeous this colors and absolutely says fall all right one or two more yep i think we got two more uh this one's from our friend christy a uh sunrise in prescott arizona wow it is cold there yeah so there's a beautiful set the sun is coming up you got colors in the sky the you know you've got the this is actually L-shaped composition, and that's in my book. Yeah, L, if you follow the line, yeah, just on the edge of the tree and the horizon forms an L, as you can see, and that's called L-shaped composition. It works as a framing device. I would love to see something in it, a punctuation point, a bird would be awesome either sitting on the branches or flying in the sky. And sometimes, again, it's a waiting game. Just put yourself where you think there's a good photograph and wait until something shows up in your set. Think about it like you're the director, and now what do you need to add that extra quality? Okay, one more. All right, our final photo for this week. Uh, this one is from Hugo. Met yeah. the shepherd during my morning walk. Wow, that's really interesting. Where is this Hugo? I'm very curious. What? Uh, he lives in... I'm looking right now. Okay, River. She is just biting my hand now. Thank you. Anyway, I like this photograph yeah. a lot. I love the atmosphere, the you know the dust from the sheep. And there's his dog, there's the there's the herder. He I'm thinking it's a Basque herder, that's why 
it may be in northern Cal or not northern but uh, eastern California in the Sierra is where I would put it I don't know if that's where it is because there's a lot of Basque herders that live there the Basque originally came over from Spain and settled there around Bakersfield up in the mountains in fact there's a really cool restaurant called wool gatherers in if you're ever in bakersfield go there amazing basque restaurant uh anyways conjuring up all these interesting ideas i love the i i like the tonality of it and the uh you know the clearness of this is the sheep herder who's working the sheep and there's his dog anyway that's a good one Okay, so is that it for today? Uh, it's actually in the Netherlands is where that photo was in taken. In the Netherlands? So. Wow. I know, I never would have guessed that. Okay, that definitely changed my whole point of view. But it looks a lot like Northern California, Central California, Eastern California. Okay. And uh, excellent lighting. Yeah, that Just lighting is great. Very good photo. Okay, guys, well, thank you for tuning in and submitting your stuff. Please just continue continue to be active in the AYP club because you guys get to know each other and you can get critique from each other and put notes in there and stuff. And that's really helpful. That's really what we created it for as a community for you guys to be a part of and work in. Um, so we're getting really close to the holidays. Hanukkah starts, I think, Monday, right? And Christmas is a week from Sunday. So we're right in we're right in here. And yeah, we it's a really are. great time to take photographs of your family. Annie Leibowitz has so many photographs of her family. She's constantly photographing them. M way more than I ever do. So just remember they're great photo ops when you when you have a lot of family around. I did a whole thing with my grandmother once. Um, just photographing her and I wanted to really remember her and I just had her she was actually we decided to get our history our family history down so she sat down in front of a tape recorder and we recorded her telling us the family history I have to dig up those tapes I don't know where they are and she while she was doing it I was going around with my Leica photographing her I still have those somewhere River's making a huge mess down here. It's just all this cuteness can also produce a lot of chaos. Anyway, thank you guys. Grab my advancing your photography bundle on the green sale. Use that code green. Get it for yourself or get it for a friend or do both and you will advance your photography. Okay. Thanks for joining us. Remember to if you haven't already done so, please subscribe. There's my green screen, the magic of green screen. I don't know why it doesn't show up. With Anyway, it's just not set up right for it. So like the video, share it. I'd love to see you guys share it. Make sure you follow me on Instagram down here because I'm putting up stories all the time and reels that are just kind of the ongoing conversation. Like I often ask questions in the stories and I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. And I guess that's about it, except to say, remember to get out and capture your own images of life. Take care, you guys. We'll see.